Well, this morning on Palm Sunday, we are commemorating Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem, the holy city. And this trek into Jerusalem is a very dangerous one for Jesus. He knows that. Why would people in power want to kill him? Well, I've told you before, Jesus was not killed because he was a nice guy. Jesus was killed because he challenged the state. He spoke truth to the powers that be, and he said to them, I'm going to establish a new kingdom. And in this kingdom, the last, the people that you treat like dirt, they're going to be first. The last shall be first in this kingdom. And the least of these will be the most important. Jesus said to them, I'm going to establish a kingdom where the sick will be healed, the poor will be fed, the stranger will be made welcome, and those who are outcasts will be loved and accepted. That was a threat to the state back in Jesus' day. And that is a threat to the state today in the United States of America. If we are truly to call ourselves Christians, followers of the way of Jesus, then we are called to do as he did, to challenge the state and to speak truth to the powers that be. When they enact policies that hurt the sick, that keep out the stranger, that discriminate against those who are different, and when they support policies that hurt the poor but benefit the rich. That will make us enemies of the state, but so was Jesus. As we heard in our words of integration and guidance this morning from Reverend Kathy Dwyer, a UCC pastor in Virginia, to come in the name of the Lord means to come with values that are in sharp contrast to the state. And nothing displays that more clearly than the Palm Sunday story. As we just heard in today's gospel, Jesus comes into Jerusalem, the holy city, coming in the name of the Lord, and he's riding on a donkey. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen a grown man riding a donkey, a 33-year-old man sitting on a donkey. It is not very majestic, and it is not very kingly. Jesus was doing that on purpose. He was purposely mocking the Roman Empire and their military processions, which was all about might and power. Jesus was giving a counter-protest. And those who were cheering him on palms, shouting Hosanna, they got it. They understood what he was doing. And yet, many of those people who on Palm Sunday were waving palms, in just a few days, some of those very same people are going to be spitting on Jesus. And some of those people that were shouting Hosanna with great joy, in just a few days, they're going to be shouting something different. Crucify him. And that is why today's service is going to shift dramatically in tone, starting right now. We began our service with great joy, waving our palms and shouting Hosanna. But our service today is going to end in complete silence. Peter Black is not going to be playing a postlude. Instead, we're going to process out of the church in complete silence after singing, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Today we are commemorating two processions the joyous procession of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and the sorrowful procession of Jesus to the cross on Good Friday. 
It all happened in less than one week's time. We understand that we need both the palms and the passion, the joy and the sorrow, the darkness and the light, if we wish to resurrect the Christ and to experience new life. Both processions are necessary. Now, the word procession comes from the root word process. Our spiritual procession, our spiritual journey from separation to wholeness and oneness with God is a process. And if you've been with us throughout Lent, you know that this 40-day process requires us to go to a place of darkness so that we can die to worldly things, so that we can let go of them, so that we can crucify the ego and resurrect the Christ light within us. It is why Jesus and priests, monks, and nuns of all faith traditions, not just Christianity, there are Buddhist monks and nuns, Hindu monks and nuns, for example. It's why so many of them, like Jesus, lived lives of poverty, chastity, and obedience. The reason they did that is because they knew that the way of the world, the way of the ego, was all about money, sex, and power. And they decided to go another way because they knew that way crucified the ego and resurrected the light. And that's what we are being called to do. As Reverend Kathy Dwyer said this morning, we as Christians are called to be countercultural people. And in her words, she mentioned a book I would highly recommend to all of you called The Last Days, about the last days of Jesus. And that book was written, as she mentioned, by the late Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan, Two names that should be familiar to you if you come to Douglas UCC on a regular basis. These were the men who were part of the very famous Jesus Seminar, and they are two of the leading voices in the progressive Christian movement. But in that book, these scholars tell us that on that first Palm Sunday, there were two processions. One of Jesus coming into Jerusalem in the way of the Lord, and the other was the procession of Pontius Pilate coming in, in the name of Caesar. They're very different processions. One is grand on a white stallion and a golden chariot, and the other is on a donkey. One is the way of power and might and prestige and privilege. And the other is the way of love and forgiveness and humility and service. And it's a great question to ask ourselves along our spiritual journey from time to time is, which procession am I following right now? Which one is my king? Who's the ruler that I'm under? Great question to ask ourselves. In the first reading this morning that Eric read for us, Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul is writing the Philippians to try to encourage them along this way of love. He tells them, put on the same mindset as Jesus. Now, the Philippians that he's writing to, those first century Christians, they lived in the Roman Empire. And they, as good citizens they were told to pledge their allegiance to the state. They would raise their hand to the Roman insignia and proclaim that Caesar was Lord. But those first Christians refused to do that. They did not want to have their allegiance, their alliance, be with people who were about power and might. And that made them subversive. That's why they were persecuted for their faith. And that's why Paul wrote his letter to the Philippians from inside of prison. So, here we are. We're in the last week of Lent, the beginning of Holy Week. 
And this whole time, these 40 days, we have been letting go of all of the things that are still keeping us in that alliance with the world and what the world says we should be. Now, 40 in the Bible is a highly symbolic number. We know Moses is out in the desert for 40 years, and Jesus is out in the wilderness for 40 days, and Lent is 40 days. Because 40 symbolizes a time of preparation for spiritual completion. And so we, on these 40 days of Lent, have been going into the wilderness, into darkness, and we're letting go of the things that no longer serve us, the things that are keeping us from our light. And that process can be very painful. It's why most people don't want to do it. To crucify the ego hurts. It's like a death. And for many, it means taking up our cross every day. But that's not a bad thing. You know, the word sacrifice, it comes from a Latin word which means to make holy, to make whole. That's why Palm Sunday is at the beginning of Holy Week in the holy city because we're journeying to a place of wholeness. But that journey requires times of darkness. So this week, I hope that the palms that you'll take home with you today will remind you to enter into the holy city. You know where it is. Jesus told you. He said, this kingdom of heaven is within you. That's where the holy city is. So may the palms remind you this week to go within. And when you are there, to connect with that light that Jesus said is within you. And may the cross of Palm Sunday remind you that we need to experience death, death of the ego, if we are to resurrect the Christ self, the God self, the self that God created us to be. Have a blessed Holy Week. Namaste.